So in eighth grade math, I learned about second degree polynomials, such as y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Depending on the coefficients a, b, and c, the resulting parabola can be concave up, concave down, um, have an axis of symmetry, have a maxima or minima at different locations. Um, so uh, more recently, I learned a geometric definition of a parabola. A parabola is a set of points that are equidistant to a point called a focus and a line called a directrix. So let's draw our axis first. So let's do that. So there we go. This is going to be Y and this will be X. And let's draw the arrows right there and there and there and there okay now that our arrows are drawn and we are ready so let's put down our point and we're, we could label this xf and yf to denote that it is the focus so let's put down that point let's label it xf comma yf and now let's draw a line this will be our directrix so let's draw this line and this line will have the equation yd is going to be equal to m, the slope, times xd plus b. Um, so yeah, if we would like to plot this parabola, we would need pairs of x and y coordinates. But that seems a little complicated. So let's do something easier first. Let's say we want to plot our directrix or this line right here. To do this, we would generate an array of xd values and calculate for their corresponding yd values. Um, so if we have a given point uh, xd and we calculate for its corresponding yd and we move in a direction perpendicular to this point, uh, to our directrix until we reach a point that is equidistant to our both our focus and our directrix. So let's do this. So let's say our point is gonna be right here and let's label it X comma Y. And now let's do the line segments connecting so we can see that they are this perpendicular and this point right here is going to be our XD comma Y. D. and these two line segments will be equal so now um you notice that we know uh, all the variables except two we know xf yf we know xd and yd um so now we have two um two variables that we currently do not know and that means that we're going to be needing two equations to solve for these two variables, x and y. So our first equation arises um, through the um, constraint that these the, the line segment um, representing the distance from our point x, y to the directrix must be perpendicular to the directrix. So the slope of this line segment is going to be y minus yd over x minus xd and because this is the um per and because this line segment is perpendicular to this directrix it will be the negative reciprocal of the slope of this directrix so it's going to be negative one over m now we can multiply x minus xd to both sides and negative m to both sides so let's do that so multiply that across so m first m times y d minus y and that's going to be equal to x minus x d now we could add x d to both sides so um m times y d minus y plus x d is going to be equal to x coolio uh, so one equation down and one more to go our second equation arises um, because the constraint that these two line segments from the, our focus to our point x, y, and from our point uh, x, d, y, d to our um, 
xy point must be equidistant. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we could find out the, the distance from these points, the distance of these line segments, and we could set them equal. So let's do that. So uh, let's take um, the distance from our focus to our point x, y first. So that's going to be x minus xf all squared plus y minus yf squared. And all of this will be square rooted. I cannot draw straight lines anymore. And this will be equal to x minus xd squared plus y minus yd squared. And let's take the square root of all of this. Okay, we are getting there. Now, we uh, could square both sides and separate uh, terms containing x and y on opposite sides. So let's do that now. And we can also expand it while we're doing this too. So that will be x squared minus 2xxf plus xf squared minus parentheses x squared minus 2xxd plus xd squared my bad <laughs> and this will be equal to y minus 2y yd plus yd squared minus parentheses y minus 2y yf plus yf squared Okay, this is looking pretty good. We notice that um, on both sides of the equation, we could cancel out x squared and y squared. So let's do that. So x squared minus x squared is zero. Y squared minus y squared is zero. You also notice that on both sides, we could factor out two x or two y. Um, so let's do that too. So let's factor out two x on the, our left side so this will be xd minus xf and this will be equal to 2y times um, yf minus yd and since we know xf squared and xd squared yd squared and yf squared we could just make a variable for all of that so let's do that right here so p let's say the variable is going to be p and this will be um y d squared minus y f squared plus x d squared minus x f squared Okay, now we could divide across by two. So we could get rid of this two, and we could get rid of this two, and this could be all divided by two. There we go, this is looking pretty good. Now, we could use our previous equation. Um, X is gonna be equal to M times YD minus Y plus XD. Um, you could just put that in. So let's do that. So this will be M times YD minus Y times xd minus xf plus xd times xd minus xf and this will be equal to y times yf minus yd plus p there we go okay now let's separate um all of the terms containing y on our right side so you notice that there's a y on our left side so let's bring that to the right side so i'll be negative m times y times xd minus xf so we could add this to both sides and we could also subtract p from both sides so let's do that uh, while doing so we could also move um we could just flip the equation around so let's do that so y times let's, let's go down a little bit y times y f minus y d plus m times x d minus x f and this will be equal to i think i have enough room to fit all of this in 
uh, notice that there's x d minus x f on both of these terms, so we can factor that out. So x d minus x f times m y d plus x d uh, minus p. We need to remember that. Okay. Now, all we need to do is divide yf minus yd plus m times xd minus xf to both sides. And then, we could plot it using collaboratory. So let's do that. Scroll down a little bit more. So y times, no, 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 my bad. Let's go back one. Okay, y is going to be equal to xd minus xf times m y d plus x d minus p and all of this will be over y f minus y d plus m times x d minus x f and now let's plot this using collaboratory since now we know x d y d x f y f and we also know x and y so let's get plotting Okay, now we have collaboratory open, so let's start plotting. Um, to start out, let's import both numpy and matplotlib. So to do this, import numpy as mp and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and shift enter to run that. Um, matplot, not plob. Let's fix that up, and there we go. Okay, let's start out by plotting our focus. So let's define our xf and yf variables. So to do this, let's we could choose anything for them. Let's say we want to be three and three. So xf is going to be three, and yf is also going to be three. Now let's plot this. So to plot this, all we need to do is just fig comma ax is going to be equal to plt dot subplots and let's not put anything in these parentheses and keep them as default okay now let's do ax dot plot which will plot um this point or line and we're just going to be plotting this point so xf comma yf now if these if we run it um without doing anything else we're just going to see that we just have a blank canvas so we actually need to define a color and a point um so let's do that now. So um, comma, quotation, and then let's say we want green circle, uh, OKB okay, circle. And there we go. Now our focus is plotted. You might notice that it is um, the canvas, the figure is actually um, not a square. And I think it'll look nicer as a square. So let's fix it up. All we need to do is just edit the fig size by going to these parentheses and just do fig size it's gonna be equal to parentheses and then four comma four. Let's run that and there we go. Now onto the next step. Let's plot our directrix. To do this, uh, let's define M, our, uh, our slope and B, our Y intercept first so m is just going to be let's say um negative one and maybe we want a y-intercept of one okay now um let's generate an array of xd values so to do that we're just going to be using numpy's lin space command which um creates linearly spaced points uh, so like xd is just going to be equal to mp dot lin space open parentheses and in here, start, let's make it start out from negative four, go to four with 25 points. Now let's calculate for YD. So YD is gonna be very simple. It's just gonna be M, the slope, times XD plus B. Now, now uh, let's plot our, um, our directrix. So AX dot plot, open parentheses, xd comma yd and let's make these uh this line say uh blue so did you that blue there we go now we have our directrix and our focus now let's actually get to plotting the actual thing let's plot our parabola so first off um let's start by defining our variable p so to do this p is just going to be equal to open parentheses this is going to be a big parentheses and then um it's just going to be yd squared minus yf squared 
plus xd squared minus xf squared and all of this will be divided by two sorry someone just bumped my uh, green screen okay now um after we defined our variable p let us define y so y is just going to be equal to this big wacko equation so xd minus xf multiplied by m the slope times yd plus xd minus p and all of this will be divided by open parentheses yf minus yd plus m times xd minus xf there we go okay now let's calculate for x and this is the easy part so x is just going to be equal to m the slope times yd minus y um plus xd now let's plot this so all we need to do is just go down here ax dot plot x comma y and let's make these points red i have this line this parabola red now uh let's do some visual changes to our figure um let's say we want to change the background into let's say black so to do this we just uh, enter right here and maybe just do ax dot set underscore face color and then we could just select the color uh by just like take type in black but actually let's put another parentheses and let's give the color code so zero red zero green and zero blue and then let's have an alpha channel of one we actually put two commas so let's get rid of one of those there we go so now our background is black um so let's do one last change to make this look better let's say we want to add a plot uh, <laughs> no duh we want to add a plot but let's say we want to add a grid on the background so to do that it's pretty simple all we need to do is ax dot grid open parentheses and capital true and shift enter and that if it's gonna load uh if yours does not load uh, all you need to do is just go into runtime and click restart runtime click yes and now we go over here and you can see that was actually an error and it was because we said gird and not grid sorry about that i am not familiar with this keyboard at all i'm using my dad's keyboard so shift enter there we go name mp is not defined if you do restart your own time you need to make sure to um shift enter everything that you did beforehand so shift enter shift enter to run and there you go so that's our plot of our parabola using collaboratory python in a little bit of algebra thank you guys for watching this video if you guys enjoyed uh, it would mean the world to me if you guys subscribe and maybe even like the video video <laughs> have a nice day and i'll see you guys next video peace